Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics, the beautiful quilt behind me, Full Bloom. We mentioned we we're going to do some videos. It's going to be actually two of us, me going over the applique. And then, of course, once the beautiful applique is down, the beautiful thread painting comes into play. Tammy has a lot of experience with this. Let's just review here. 10 month block of the month. Maybe you're just seeing this for the first time. If we still have spots, your name should be on that list. A beautiful 10 month, uh, just celebration of color flowers for spring. Who wouldn't want to have this in their home? So pretty. So grab your spot. The 40 weight thread set. Normally we're sewing applique with 50 weight, but the designers of this beautiful pattern said, no, no, we want to showcase the thread. And again, Tammy will be covering that. If you, maybe you've already signed up for your spot. If you didn't get the Oracle thread set, we know that's an investment, but we also know it's a thousand meters of some of the most beautiful thread made in the world. It's made in Italy. Um, and there really isn't anyone that even approaches, I would say, the, just the depth of color and the quality of this 40 weight. So remember that will be in your sewing room after this project is done. There'll be other things that you can sew with that. So if you haven't picked it up, do that, as well as the Totally Stable. Again, Tammy will show you after we get the applique down, and now it's time to do thread painting. She'll be adding that Totally Stable to the back as she begins that kind of thread journey of really just showcasing the stunning thread. But the first thing we need to do is get things down to the background so we can even stitch them down. As we said, we have been blessed to have the opportunity to offer this to you as prefused laser cut, which has not been done before with this particular quilt. So all of the steps of tracing all of this, cutting all this out, look at all these pieces. And that's just one block. You can skip that. We are using a very high-end, much more expensive fusible webbing on this because our kits and your kit are worth it. This is a fusible from Sulky, which has a lighter hand. We all know what that's like to grab a hold of an applique block and it's just really kind of thick. Well, the Sulky fusible does, it's the perfect combination of, of a bond, but it's not so thick and bulky which I love because again, we're going to be doing a lot of thread painting, but even more than that, we want that supple feel. And I have this block here that has one, two, three, four, five layers, and I still can't believe how supple that is. That will be what's on the back of each of the shapes that are in your kit month over month. So let's look at our diagram here from fourth and sixth designs. I love that they give us a full size layout. Of course, the dark, uh, drawn line around the perimeter is the size of your background. You might even opt to make your background just a little bit larger uh, in your kit. You can have just a little bit more extra fabric and trim it down after the applique is done or trim it to that size. Notice the dash lines representing, of course, our seam allowance. So as we look at our shape here and I'm, we're working on this block, this is the one we're doing together. The one shape in the back here it's just one whole piece. And then of course we have all of our little additional details that add to the beauty of really kind of just the different folds and the different petals of our flower is involved in that as well as our two pieces here. Sometimes when you're doing the applique and you have a darker fabric, it can be difficult to see through to the background diagram, even with a light box, which is true here because it's purple. As we look around the quilt, when you get to your fabric or, or to your block that has the white, this will be no problem for you. Same with the pink um, down here. So I'm glad we're working on this block here because it is difficult to see through because this is a dark fabric. Now I recommend you leave on this fusible on the back until we get these other pieces uh, iron down to that. Your, your iron needs to be on a medium heat. Make sure as quilters, we are always dialed into maximum heat. Bring that back to a medium heat. I have the wafer three light box here with me today. Notice these are the pieces I went ahead and just laid out on the diagram. As I said, it is difficult to see through a dark uh, colored background to any diagram. 
So if you go ahead and lay this out, maybe even take a picture of that. Have that as a point of reference. That I have found that to be very helpful. But what I'm going to do is actually stack the pieces. I'm going to start on the upper right and work my way. So I'm just going to stack these so these are in order. That'll help me. And we'll build this together. A little bit might be interpretive if we can't see, see completely through. And I'll just put those here. Actually, I'll put those right up here. So I've got uh, my iron on a medium heat. And I'm going to probably work in sections. I'm not going to try to lay everything down and move it over. I think that's just unrealistic. Because if you bump one thing and it moves, now you're starting again. Remember, we cannot iron on our light box. So we have to move that to our wool pressing mat or maybe if you're working on an ironing board whatever that surface is. So maybe we'll work in maybe half, and then we'll work on the other half. So as I mentioned, I have this on here, which allows me to bring it to my wool pressing mat and iron it down. If I remove the backing now, that would be a problem because I would have to have a second Applifuse mat here because the moment I the, uh, remove the paper, this is going to iron to whatever surface it's on. So that's why I still have this here. Because my first instinct, if I can't see through, go ahead and remove the paper, right? It improves your visibility a little bit, but now makes your life very complicated as you're trying to move this and iron it down. And you certainly don't want to be stitching or ironing your shape down to your wool background. To a confession, I've done it twice so far. <laughs> and I want to keep that as my record. Two is my max, right? So let me just turn this on. And we have our shape here. How lovely that we do not have to cut that out. So sometimes when I'm like, I can't really see through this, lowering the lights in the room absolutely helps. Obviously, we have the studio lights up because we're filming a tutorial. But I've had a lot of luck of bringing the lights in my crafting room down to almost nothing. So the only thing behind that's illuminating is the diagram. That has helped considerably. We don't have that option today. So let's just take a look and say, OK, I see that first shape goes there. Here's the other thing. This is your project. If this is not in the exact position to the, a, a 16th of an inch, who cares, right? It's all about really just getting in the ballpark of where this is going to go. And if we want to stop and just uh, iron down our first couple shapes, we can do that. Let's put down that shape. And we take a little peek. I like that. Let's just do that part so far. OK, now let's look at our next area. It never hurts to confirm. Here, here, let's see, that one went there. This goes here. We get to do a dark purple. OK, one, two, three. I like working. Maybe three is a good, maybe three is a great number. Back we go. Take a little peek. Oh, right in that saddle. I like that. Right there. Be careful. Let me show you that. Look at how, I don't know if you can pick this up. Notice how dull this is. That's because that's the glue side. It's very subtle. Remember I said we're using a very special fusible on this. It doesn't have the, the, a lot of glue. It's just a very light bond. So you're not going to see the normal shine 
that you might see with fusibles that have a lot more uh, glue, such as a heat and bond light. So just be sure <laughs> you're on the right side of that fabric. That's another one I've definitely done. Iron to the wrong side, and guess what? It ends up on my iron. And we'll just adjust that. You get the idea. Work in small sections. Now, one thing I want to point out, these lines are representing really thread painting that Tammy will be going over. Remember how our shape is all just one big purple flower in the back and we're adding all these details. These lines are not layers of fabric, they're layer of thread. That kind of threw me when I first saw this pattern and I was like, I like that they've given us kind of a guideline of where that thread would be. So if you are fairly new to thread painting, as I am very new to that, I would probably, at even maybe with a, a very subtle micron, even draw where that is so I feel confident stitching on that line. So just, a, just something I've been thinking about as I'm contemplating my own thread journey of this project. Okay, let's lay, let's lay out our next section Make sure we understand our pieces and we have the right pieces. Oh, that goes in there. Okay, I'm just confirming my spots here. All right, I am going to just go ahead, get those down. We can build our center, build our flower, put it onto the background, and then we can talk about some of the smaller blocks that will be included each month as well. Now that we have our purple part, love that. Now we have our other two pieces here. So again, so that we can just fuse them together, I'm going to leave this paper on at this point. This will sit right in the corner. I've removed the paper here. So easy, right? Just sitting that, it, it, there really is no other place for it to be. So we can just set that in the corner. Not all of the blocks are this intuitive. At other times, we will absolutely be using the Applefuse mat. Let me show you a block that I'm talking about where the block, is, the, the flower, the main flower is not just in one big piece. Let's, let's look at this real quick. Right here, this flower, you can see there's this part coming in this part coming in, these coming in, another fabric coming in. When you have all those elements coming in, and those are lighter colored fabrics, so it should be easier to see through, that's where the Applefuse mats will come into play. So now that we have our center portion done, we can um, actually, let's, yes, let's take that apart. Let's look at this. We have our background. And let's look at that. I can see how it all, see how there's kind of a, a, this could really go. There is a movement to this fabric that is so cool. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so this is going to sit in that corner, but this is again where I can, I would like to see through. It's a darker fabric again, but you can see there is actually no other place for this to be because the petals are sewn into the seam allowance. So we are moving this here and moving this here. And of course we need to remove that paper now because now it is time to iron everything down. This is the beauty of a precision laser cut kit where it really takes a lot of the guesswork out of the picture. There's no other place for this to, to be. And similarly, this is going to sit in that corner, just like that. So let's iron this together. Wow. 
boom. And just like that, none of that tracing, none of that cutting, maximum fun. <laughs> it's kind of like painting. I love painting a new wall. The prep work, however, I do not love. I just want to see the color on the wall. <laughs> so that's the fun part about laser cut kits. So if you've never done a laser cut, or maybe you've done a lot of them, you know what I'm talking about. And now we are off to Tammy's pro tips on how do we actually do all this thread painting. Let's just zoom in on this. I'm sure Tammy will be talking more about this, but this is where that beautiful density of thread is just added in and added in to accentuate that. Let's look at the smaller blocks here. Same concept where we have our background, our foreground. Some of the flowers have just one piece in the center here, and some have two. Same process. We'll just take those. I would just assemble the flower center, use my smaller apple fuse mat, bond everything together, down to the background it goes, and the thread painting begins. So speaking of thread painting, that is Tammy's job. I will be on the audience side of that watching the process because I'm excited to learn how to use the 48 weight thread to just accentuate an already amazing quilt. Okay, Tammy's up next to show us how that process is done. Jen has done a beautiful job assembling our block for full bloom. I have, oh, I get to do the fun part. I get to show you how to stitch these blocks down. This is so much fun. I absolutely love to do this. Um, I call it thread painting. They call it applique edge coloring. It's the same thing, different terms, but it means that essentially the same thing. We're just gonna put a lot of thread on the edge of your applique. So we're gonna be using our beautiful Aurafil thread set today. And I do have the dark purple on my machine. That's why it's missing from the end here. Now I have put this thread is a 40 weight. So I have put it in my bobbin as well as on the top. And I match my thread when I do thread painting. Because sometimes when you're stitching along, you're going back and forth and back and forth with your machine. Sometimes your, your bobbin might tend to pull up a little bit. So if you always have the matching thread in your bobbin, you will never have an issue with your bobbin thread showing on top, all right? The other thing I'm doing is I'm using a 9014 Schmetz Super Nonstick Needle. These needles are amazing for this application. The size 90 is because we're using a heavier weight thread. We're using a 40 weight thread. Normally you see us using like a top stitch needle, which is a size 80, but we're also using a 50 weight cotton on those. And that's a much thinner thread. So when we're using a heavier thread, I need to have a larger eye in my needle. And I love the super nonstick because we are going through fusible. So let's get started with our block. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some totally stable stabilizer and I'm actually gonna fuse it to the back of my block. So I have pre-cut this ahead of time, and I want to point out to you there are two sides to it, and I want to show you this side is shiny. You can see that shine on there, and this side is like paper. It's just matte, all right? So we're going to take the shiny side up. We're going to put our block on top of this, and my block is a little bit bigger, or I've cut my stabilizer bigger than my block. All right, and I'm going to turn this over on my wool pressing mat. We'll bring this over here like this. Just kind of shift stuff a little here. All right, so I'm just going to start fusing this, and I'm using my iron is set on a medium heat. Batik really adheres quickly. This product adheres quickly to Batik. So I'm just going to start moving my iron just like this, and I can see it's already sticking. It's already sticking. Now, I'm also not using any steam. And so you're not supposed to use any steam with this. Let's see if I can go ahead and get the rest of this done quickly before I need to recharge my iron. Oh yeah, it's still plenty hot. 
This little Panasonic iron works great for large projects like this because then I don't have to, I don't have a cord I'm worried about. There we go. Look at that. That just, I mean, it just stuck it right down. You see that? It does remove, and I'm just going to take this on a corner and show you. See how this peels back? So it is easy to remove. All right, and it leaves no residue. We fuse that back down. Just an amazing product from Sulky. All right, so now my stabilizer is adhered. My block is ready to go. I think we get to go have fun now and go to the machine. So I will see you over there. All right, so when I'm going to start stitching, the first thing I've done is I put on an open-toed foot. I need to be able to see exactly where I'm going. My stitch length is 2.5. 2.5 is a default setting on the Bernina, and I did play, I have played with larger stitches and smaller stitches, but I just really, really like the way the 2.5 stitches on here. So I recommend that you always, always practice before you start doing something like this. You can just take some fusible, Throw, throw it on some fabric and just start playing with this. If you like to free motion quilt, this is right up your alley as well. You can use a free motion foot to do that. I am actually going to use a 20D uh, on my Bernina now. All right, so let's go ahead and start. So I'm just going to start stitching on the applique. And then I'm just going to put my thumb on my reverse button and I'm going to leave my thumb there because I'm going to use my reverse a lot. Okay, so I'm going to come on and I'm going to reverse and I'm going to come back on. You see how those stitches are just starting to lay in there? Now I'm going to go back and on and back, working my way slowly around this. See how there's no lines I have to follow. I'm just stitching the edge of this applique. This is so much fun. See how you're just stitching several times back and forth, back and forth you go. You put as many or as few stitches as you like on here. When I come to a curve, just kind of go around that curve, turn my fabric a little. Now, I wouldn't worry about stitching inside the flower. I would do that once it's quilted. So you can definitely add a lot more definition to your stitching or to your flower with additional stitching once you quilt this. And I'm just going to kind of spin around these corners a little bit here, around this curve. See, I'm just turning my fabric around. There we go. Here we go. Let's do the outside edge. So the object of this is just to keep your edges locked down and just put some beautiful thread on here. Just make a sharp turn here. It doesn't matter if you go off the applique. It just does not matter. Nothing matters when you're doing this. Just have fun, relax. I love thread painting. This is so much fun. Back and forth you go. So as you can see, this is such a fun technique 
to use for putting applique down. I absolutely love to thread paint. You can see how I, my stitches just kind of run all along the edges. There's no way those edges of that applique are ever going to come up. Let me show you how easy it is to get this product off of your block. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this over and you just peel this back from the edge and you just simply tear it away. Just like this. Isn't that cool? I love this product. Tear it away. You tear away from your whole block. You can tear out the center if you like. No problem. All right. That's how you tear it away before you put your quilt together. I hope you've enjoyed this. I know that Full Bloom is an amazing quilt. We can't wait to see your blocks. Please post your blocks. We want to see what you've done. We definitely want to keep track of your progress as you work your way through this block of the month. So please post them on Facebook, on Instagram. You can tag us with hashtag Shabby Fabrics and we'll talk to you then. If you have not already captured your spot in this amazing block of the month, program, do that right now. Um, this is something that was launched 10 years ago, as we discovered. And after so many requests, they brought it back. Who knows when they'll do it again? So grab your spot, your thread set, your stabilizer, any of the notions you might need, and I'll see you soon on another shabby video.